Hello, my friend. Hi, everybody. So a few days ago, I was flying as a passenger. Uh, sometimes uh, it happens so on the other side of the door. And, you know, I, I love to do that because uh, I feel like I'm, I'm a spy, you know, listening in secret uh, what the other people uh, say, the comment. You know, there's always uh, somebody who is the expert to explain to the other passengers what's going on. And, of course, they haven't understood anything. But apart from that, uh, I, I like to observe uh, what the passengers uh, were doing during the flight and above all the bad behavior that they have and that they should not have because that's something that might affect their own comfort and also safety. That's what I wanted to tell you on this video today. Because for example, the first things that I see, people traveling like they're just coming out of, out of the beach uh, uh, two minutes before, you know, flip-flop, uh, uh, short, uh, uh, no sleeves, like everything is open. Um, that, okay, apart from the, 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 I mean, the, the, the core, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, long time ago, it was a pleasure to fly on an aircraft. Everybody was, uh, you know, having a suit, uh, traveling you now, very well dressed. Uh, okay, forget about that. Times have changed. Uh, it's okay. But it's a matter of comfort and safety because there are a few moments uh, that unfortunately, touching, you know, wood or whatever you wanted, that something might happen when you travel on an aircraft. Like, for example, the uh, evacuation. You know, aircraft going on landing and takeoff, something might happen, and the, the pilot had to stop the aircraft, inflate the slides, and people had to quickly get out. So, you can imagine that if you are traveling from Sharm Sheikh to Stockholm, uh, you are traveling <laughs> like uh, from the beach, uh, and you need to evacuate in Stockholm, minus five degrees, maybe a little bit of snow, uh, you might save your life, and then you, you die uh, out of cold outside, you know. Plus, uh, another thing is, uh, I'm going to show you now some nice pictures and a small video about these slides that, first of all, they're very, very long, you see. And they're not very, uh, you know, so slippery like you might think. It's not, they're not silky, you know. Uh, they're, you know, they're quite rough. Uh, so if you go down on the slide, in short, uh, I can assure you, you're gonna get injured for sure on your skin. So again, yeah, you, are, you save your life anyway, but anyway, you're gonna go home with a lot of bruises, uh, and maybe, you know, lots of pain everywhere. So it's very important to dress long sleeves, long trousers, comfortable shoes, maybe have an extra blouser when you fly, so in case the temperature goes up and down, you can make yourself more comfortable. Even because the third thing that might happen on a flight is the decompression. Now, okay, you might have seen some movie where, you know, the fuselage open, the, the window blow, and people get pushed out of the aircraft, you know, in the sky. Okay, uh, I'm not talking about so much about this uh, tragic uh, event, uh, really, really bad, because of course you can be dressed as well, the way you want it if you get out of the aircraft. Uh, I don't think you're going to survive anyway. But anyway, what is even minor decompression, where anyway, the temperature outside the aircraft, <laughs> you might not know, but when you fly at 30,000 feet, uh, 35,000 feet, the temperature might be 50 to 60 degrees below zero. Imagine, so imagine if uh, in a second uh, something happened to the fuselage, the air got mixed, the one outside, inside the aircraft, okay, go out, uh, lots of confusion, you know, and the uh, winds, but then you find yourself uh, in immediately in a temperature that is unbearable for human, uh, for human beings. So yes, you have the mask, oxygen mask that uh, no, fell from the ceiling of the aircraft that you need to put it. But yeah, you might breathe, but you are in a temperature that is unbearable. So that's why also it's a good idea to dress properly. About the mask, by the way, something very important is, you know, when you hear the cabin crew uh, show you how to use it, and they keep saying all the time, before helping other people, put the mask on yourself. And I heard sometimes comments of passengers say, ah, oh, come on, I don't care, of course, I'm going to help my son, I'm going to help my wife before putting the mask uh, on me. Yeah, look at this uh, table I'm showing now. This is, tells you the uh, time of consciousness that the human being has at different altitude. As you can see, it, it, it might last a very, very few seconds uh, at very high altitude. That means uh, that meanwhile you are trying to help somebody else, uh, you might lose consciousness, and therefore everybody dies. That is the reason why, first of all, as soon as you see the mask coming down, put it on you, start to breathe, then at least you survive, and then you might help other people eventually.
Okay, this is very, very important. Now, let's go back to the beginning of the flight. There are some uh, situations that, uh, as a passenger, you can help the whole flight to go on time. Because this is something that a lot of people don't understand tonight, that the passengers itself is very important to the success of the on-time performance. The passengers are the ones who waste a lot of time getting seated, putting the suitcase, you know, adjusting. So, first of all, check your seat number. Where can you see the number? A lot of people I see coming into the aircraft lost. You know, they don't know where, where, where is it. Oh, ah, two Foxtrot, uh, three Delta, where is it? Check the number here, you know, below uh, the ceiling on this line. There's a number, so you have uh, the, the room and the letter. So, check if you are seated close to the window or onto the aisle. And then go quickly to your seat. Uh, don't waste a lot of time, you know. Uh, some time ago, uh, I, I was actually in front, luckily, in front of the, out of the cockpit, uh, welcoming the passengers. There was this guy sitting in the front, front row, you know. It took like 10 minutes, you know, blocking everybody. He stayed on the aisle, blocking everybody, you know, to put his suitcase, uh, you know, remove his jacket, uh, finishing to WhatsApp some friends, you know. And then, you know, of course, if everybody takes 10 minutes, uh, the rest of 200 passengers uh, is going to take two hours to board them. And then, you know what happened? At the time, we had to leave, actually. No, he was pissed. Oh, oh, you, uh, we are late. We're supposed to leave now. And he was accusing my cabin crew. They said, ah, you are not doing your job correctly. You know, you are really bad. I mean, luckily, I was there. First of all, don't touch my crew. Okay, and then I told this guy, you know, what, what are you saying? I mean, ah, you're accusing my crew. You took 10 minutes. Do you think it's correct to do that? You know, obviously you blocking the, the, the way to everybody, you know. And that, that, that's what happened, you know, that, that you, you arrive late and the other flight also take off late. That the people doesn't know that it's the fault of the passengers on the other flight. And they start to blame the airline, the airport, aviation, blah, 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 you know. Another important thing is, you know, uh, the, the overhead, uh, it's for the uh, big suitcases like uh, trolleys. There's no space for trolley for everybody. You know, even aircraft, uh, let's say 200 seats, uh, there's no space for 200 trolleys. This is a physical thing, you know. So if you have a small uh, backpack or small baggage, put it in front of you under the seat in front of you and leave space above for bigger trolley so that there is, uh, everything is come easier, uh, faster, and we can go on time and everybody is happy. Another important thing is that the aircraft has to be balanced. You know, sometimes you might see the cabin crew asking you to change seats and move ahead or back of the aircraft. They're not stupid. No, people say, oh, come on, what's the difference? Well, I'm not so happy. No, people get offended. No, it's not for that. It's, where is the MDAD? Okay, the aircraft are very long, you know, like this. No, this is the MDAD. No, see how long it is. Now, the wing is here. No? Obviously, the aircraft has to be balanced. So, let's assume that there's a big group of people who travel together and decided not to come anymore for some reason. Maybe they're lost somewhere. So, uh, the aircraft, uh, the, has been, the, um, uh, the seats are assigned to all the passengers so that the aircraft is balanced. Okay, so let's assume that this group of people, oh, 20, 30 people, were seated all together in front and suddenly they don't show up. Obviously, some people from the back has to be moved forward, you know, for this reason. So, don't get offended, comply with the instructions quickly. And, and this is the reason, okay? And I've seen this uh, sometimes in the past, traveling as a passenger, people, oh, what's the problem? You know, I'm not that heavy. Yeah, you are not heavy, but there are rules. Uh, okay, of course, there are some kind of limitations, of course, but in, in certain way, but that's very, very uh, also important, you know? Another thing is that when you, you, you finally you on, on your seat, you get your seat, you know, check which is your emergency door, the closest to you. Because in case of emergency, if you need to evacuate, uh, Imagine the panic, the situation, the stress, you know, everything is, is messed up. So you don't have time to, to decide what to do. And usually what people does is to go in front. So you can imagine, image people uh, seated just here on this MD-80. See, there are some emergency exits on the wind. So uh, it's better to get back on the wind than travel in front, walking in front, you know. So it's very important, take a seat, uh, check which is your uh, uh, closest uh, uh, emergency so that in case of emergency, in case of evacuation, you do it in a say, okay, I know where to go. I know if I need to go in front or I need to go back. Okay, that's very, very important. And uh, and also, two things also, in case of an evacuation, leave your baggage. Don't take suitcases. 
Look at this video. This is terrible, this video. I wanted to show you because it's terrible. It was an accident in May 2019 in Moscow. This aircraft landed with a fire in the back. Look, the passengers living in front. Everybody with the bags, the suitcases, you know. And a lot of people died in this accident, seated in the back, because they couldn't move forward because everybody was stuck in the aisle waiting for other people taking these cases. Okay, uh, that was terrible. Please, uh, if uh, you need to evacuate, go quickly and get out. People might say, okay, but you know, I have a lot of important things in my bag. I cannot leave it there. Doesn't matter, first of all, but there are ways to solve the problem. For example, you can travel with these kind of things, you know, Honestly, I don't know how to call it in English, <laughs> but whatever. No, it's very thin, you know, and you can put uh, your passport, uh, your credit card, your document, whatever is very important for you. You put it here, you put it under your, your, your trouser. Not only is it safe for uh, uh, valuable things, because, you know, people, some people, has a bad habit during the flight, in the night, when everybody sleep, to steal things from the baggage, from the overhead panel, from the overhead uh, beam, you know? So, this, first of all, allows you to keep your valuable things safe. Plus, in case of evacuation, you just run away and you have everything you need with you. Of course, eh, maybe your shoes stay there, uh, okay, but uh, document, uh, money, credit card, uh, mobile phone, everything is with you. So, please, don't, let's, let's be safe, okay? Another important thing, because again, there was an accident and people died. Uh, that was in uh, 2005 in front of Palermo. This uh, NATR crashed on the water. Uh, and the thing is, when you need to inflate the jacket, just before jumping out of the water, okay, you, you keep it, if you know you are um, uh, crashing or you are landing on the water, hopefully not crashing, but here you land on the water, um, don't inflate it before jumping. What happened in the dark, and some people, uh, then they, in the investigation discovered some people will see that, they, pff, they just inflate it, you know, and then the aircraft broke down in pieces and water came inside. They were trapped there. They couldn't get out of the seat. They couldn't get out of the emergency exit because they were floating. Uh, this is terrible. So please remember, you keep it. Then you go in front of the door, poof, inflate, and then you jump into the water. Very simple. Another thing uh, about the seatbelts. Anytime you are flying, anytime you are seated, keep the seatbelt fast, even if the aircraft is very still, there's no turbulence. Because you never know when the turbulence might happen. Uh, it, it has happened many times, unfortunately, that turbulence uh, suddenly erupted and people start to jump up and down and people get injured, died, hit the head. So keep, just see that, keep it there. It's not that if something happened. Don't worry, the aircraft is not gonna break in pieces, but you don't jump, okay? Plus, remember that if uh, during the night you wanna sleep, you actually sleeping, and then the, the pilots put the seatbelts on because they're expecting some turbulence coming. Then the cabin crew need to check if you have it. And if they cannot see that if you have it, they're gonna wake you up. So good idea is keep the, you're just leaving, you put your cover, then keep the seatbelts on top of the cover, well visible, so that the cabin crew walk, see that you have the seatbelt, they don't wake you up. So you have two reasons to do it. Safety first, always, and then you can sleep and not get disturbed. Now the important thing is this, for example, uh, the, you, you're flying, you know, the cabin crew tells you, uh, ah, we're gonna do an auto land, automatic land, so please check that your mobile phone are off. What does it mean? A lot of people doesn't know that the aircraft, in many years, <laughs> can actually land by themselves, automatically, really. They arrive, you know, nicely, you know, flare, touch down, slow down, brake, but in order to do that, there's a lot of electronic involved, uh, instrumentations involved. So interference by mobile phone can cause, uh, you know, alarm, uh, can cause uh, some instrument not to work properly. Now, uh, first of all, don't mm, get me wrong. Aircraft cannot be remote controlled by ground like you see in some movie. You know, the hackers that take aircraft uh, airliners and they let them do whatever they want. No, no, this is not going to happen. It's, it's, it's fake. Also, even any kind of interference, they cannot allow the aircraft to do, to put upside down. No, no, no. I'm talking just about uh, instruments that they don't work properly. So the pilots have some signal, some warning. That's okay. Auto land cannot be done today. And so maybe they have to go around and go somewhere else. It has happened sometimes, you know, that you see the aircraft is land, you are the passengers, you know, 
And then suddenly you, you hear a, a mobile phone ringing, ring, ring, and the aircraft, ooh, go around and go somewhere else. Uh, because the pilots might have had some warning, some stuff. So if the, if the cabin crew tells you to put the mobile off, uh, put the mobile off, you're the fly, please. This is, you know, not the end of the world if you don't call, if you don't WhatsApp for a few more minutes. Okay, then when you land, you can do it. Okay. And when you land, finally we are at the stand, engines are shut down, and you go up the usual, everybody's standing, running. No, oh, like still when the aircraft is still uh, on the taxi, where do you see people standing out know, taking the suitcases? Very dangerous because we might need to stop, break suddenly, and people felt, you know, don't worry, relax, it's gonna take forever anyway before we arrive at the stand sometimes, before we open the door, it takes time. I remember once I was seated close to the aisle, everybody already standing, you know, Cow, everybody, you know, together, you know. Of course, I was, what can I do? Uh, there's not even space for me, you know. And the lady close to me asked me, aren't you getting off the plane? And I said, where should I go? There's no space even to stay standing. You know, relax, you're gonna go. Okay, so wait until everything is really stopped, see that sign off, and then we can stand up, take our things, and go. Okay, so guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, some a lot of information just to mm, allow you hopefully to give you some tips uh, to to fly more safely more comfortable okay a few rules but that might makes a big difference in uh, living on time arriving on time and above all be safe everybody so that we are in peace okay so ciao arrivederci see you on board <laughs> on the next flight and on the next video ciao